Okay, so uh, welcome to our webinar today on um, people and proposition. Um, really pleased you can join us today. Uh, some of you I know will have been on the webinar last week and, um, and yesterday as well, so good to have you back. And if you're here for the first time, I'll run through a little bit of what to expect um, before we jump into the content itself. Um, so my name's Janine, I'm um, Head of Development and Learning at the FSI um, and we're really pleased to have been working with the Big Give um, in partnership on their Christmas Challenge campaign helping support some of the learning for participants um, through developing the marketing guidebook that you can access through your um, uh, your dashboard um, and also developing some webinars um, uh, to really help you maximise this fantastic opportunity that the campaign brings. Um, so. Just for those who are new to it, I'm just going to run through a couple of preparatory slides, sort of what the format is. Um, today we've got two sort of distinct sections. So we're looking at, um, if you remember, um, if you joined us for an earlier webinar uh, on planning, we talked about the three P's, so the people, um, the proposition and the promotional channels. And so we're focusing on the people and proposition today. So we're going to break it up into two sections of around 20 minutes each. Um, with at the end of each section some time for Q&A. Um, we do have everybody sort of as part of the core settings because we've got sort of 100 plus people joining. Um, we have everybody on mute, um, but you can use the questions function um, uh, to ask questions and you can, if there are questions occurring to them, to you as we go, type them in and what I will do is pause at the end to go through all the questions and just respond to them verbally. Um, but we can email you a copy of the Q&A and slides, just drop an email to info at thebiggive.org.uk and they'll send those to you. Um, there are more webinars coming up, so the link's there, and I'll send, I'll give you a reminder of those at the end. Um, and uh, my advice would just be to make the most of this time. So use this um, space to drop down and think about your notes and, and planning um, for your charity. If you haven't accessed it yet, and it's not essential for this course, but a good uh, for this webinar, I should say, but a good resource to go back into your dashboard and download would be the um, uh, would be the marketing guidebook that goes into a bit more depth in some of the areas that we'll cover. So first of all, big welcome to um, everybody who's participating in the Christmas Challenge 2018. Um, fantastic work for all of the hard work that you've gone through so far. Um, the campaign dates, just a reminder, they run um, in a very defined period, so from midday on the 27th of November to midday on the 4th of December, and donations are only doubled in that period. Um, your dashboard is the key place to log into to access resources to help you market the campaign. Um, so you look, find that by logging into your charity account um, uh, on the Big Give. Um, the Christmas challenge will be on us before we know it, so it's really time to, to get that planning underway and get your, um, uh, get your planning started. Um, some of you will have started already and hopefully this will um, give you some further pointers and refreshers. Um, and just a reminder that um, the matching in campaign week, um, the diagram there demonstrates it, but if anyone's unclear, um, there is a match funding pot which might have um, pledges as well as, uh, well will have pledges and may have champion funds. When it launches, um, the donations to the charity are doubled by the pledges. Um, and when those have been used, that's when the uh, donations to the charity are doubled by the champion. You can exceed the amount that you've got in your match pot. Um, it obviously won't be matched, but the donations you actually get will continue to um, uh, to be processed. And that's a live matching, um, uh, sort of real-time matching process that happens um, uh, during the week. I would say um, if you have any technical questions um, beyond this information about how the challenge works, how the matching works and what the sort of rules and, and things are, um, they are sort of outside of the scope of today's webinar. My advice would be to drop them to info at thebiggive.org.uk. I will answer those that I can, um, uh, but I may need to refer others on. So getting started with people. 
you really don't want a one-size-fits-all approach with your campaign commu uh, uh, communications. So segmenting your potential audiences is really important. And from this, you can actually tailor your proposition and decide the best promotional ch channels to engage with your identified audience. So it's about not having a scattergun approach, but being really specific and targeted with your energies and efforts. And you'll maximize your fundraising efforts by identifying the sources of support and connections and influence. Um, uh, and sort of mapping those networks out can help you identify potential sources of support and networks. So let's have a look at an example. Um, you might recognize this diagram from, uh, from your workbook, um, and there is space to do this in there. Um, uh, but really, it works best if you've got a group of people. So, you know, two or three heads around a table can help. Um, and you start with thinking about your existing contact groups so um, and putting key ca categories around the map. So some examples here is I've put current donors who donate less than £50 a year, um, current donors who donate between 50 to 250 a year, and current donors that donate 250 a year plus. Um, corporate partners, laps donors, patrons, volunteers, trustees. You, the specific categories you've got around your map will differ for your charity, so this isn't something that you pick up and copy verbatim, but it just gives you an idea of thinking about those different groups and categories um, uh, of, um, uh, of prospective people that you're communicating with with your Christmas Challenge campaign. The next step then is to start to populate that. So think about the existing contacts that you've got within your organization. So thinking about who you have a relationship with um, uh, and who is it that actually holds that relationship. So if it's a corporate or another organization or an institution, you might be thinking about who it is who um, you actually have the relationship with because relationships tend to be with people. And you can add um, wish lists under each category. So for example, you can see on the screen here, a corporate partner that this particular charity example might want to get in front of, let's say Acme Corporation is someone on their wish list. They don't have any networks into them, but they'd like to try and find one through this process. So just remembering that most new donors will begin their relationship with your cause through an existing relationship. So it's about connecting through you or through someone who knows you. So this process can help you identify who the key people are that already know you and love you and, and could support your Christmas challenge campaign, but also those that you might be asking to link you in with people on your wish list. The next step then is to identify the different connections between those who are warm and those who are on your wish list. So this can help you decide who's best to approach that person, particularly for personal approaches like telephone calls and meetings. So let's say in this example here on our volunteers list on the top uh, left hand corner of your screen, we've got Mark Smith, who actually a volunteer for the charity but works for Acme Corporation. So he's, you're, you're going to approach him to ask his management team to do a sponsored rowing challenge in the main lobby area of his building with the donate and double link uh, message going on and a link sent to all employees driving them to the Big um, uh, website. You could have donation stations set up on tablets around the rowing area for visitors to the building. So by doing this, what you've found is a lead or a link into one of your people on your wish list. Another example might be in our trustees list here, we've got Annabelle who knows Shirley, um, having met at a number of the charity's events. And it's not a connection that she's got outside the charity, um, but she's been identified as having the strongest relationship. So you can identify that she might be the best person placed to approach Shirley about um, having her donations doubled to make a specific donation on top of her existing donation during the campaign. Um, another example might be um, uh, within our current donors, um, so 250 a year plus down in the bottom right hand corner, Ali would be a potential current, or she is a current donor who knows Julia, who is a lapsed donor. And with the support of the charity's fundraising manager, she could reach out to Julia to ask her to consider supporting during the challenge and having her donations doubled. 
So you may not be taking this very personal approach with all levels of donors, um, but focusing those sort of um, uh, those um, more um, relationship-based approaches on those that could be higher value um, uh, potential donations. And again, this network mapping process can help you to identify those. And it is the only only the first step. So for those significant prospects, um, you might want to consider what they will give. So um, are they a potential major donor? Um, would you like them to make a gift early on in your campaign to inspire others and get you closer to your goal? Just remembering that the maximum max match donation is £5,000 per donor, um, but they can make multiple donations if you have donors giving above that threshold. In addition to supporting your campaign though, there are other ways that your donor could support you or people on your network map. So it might be that they can inspire others to um, donate to your campaign. It might be that they're very influential on social media or they've got a lot of follow followers and they can share your message and get it out there. Um, perhaps they can um, uh, give you some pro bono expertise to help you plan and deliver your campaign. So maybe help you developing some, some images or graphics or something like like that. And it's also about understanding um, the donors uh, or the supporters' motivations for giving to you or sharing or providing something else to you during the campaign. Um, thinking about the profile of your donor in order to target and tailor your messages to them. So think about things like have they given to you before? You could use that as an opportunity to connect them back to the impact of their previous giving. What level have they given at before? Maybe the opportunity to double their donation would inspire them to give at a slightly higher level than they have previously. Maybe they've got a really strong affinity with your cause, so it might strike a chord because they've been affected personally by what you, um, what you do. Or maybe they in the past have supported a particular campaign or program of yours, and that might be an opportunity to target your messaging around this particular initiative. So let's look at how a previous um, Christmas challenge participant has put this into practice. Um, East African Playgrounds participated for the first time uh, in 2017, and they raised um, over £15,000, um, uh, which was fantastic. And they um, invested some time in identifying those groups of stakeholders and networks and really put them at the centre of their planning. So they identified some key groups being um, former volunteers. So these were people that had um, been and volunteered, were part of the East African Playgrounds family um, and had volunteered overseas for the organisation, were still in touch, seen the work firsthand, but many of them had never given before. They also had a group of major donors. Um, so whilst they didn't have many major donors, um, uh, a few months before the campaign, they'd actually been introduced to a potential major donor. <coughs> so by introducing the idea of taking part in the Christmas challenge, they showed the donors the really important role that they could play in being that final piece of the jigsaw. Um, by donating any funds still outstanding by the deadline. So that's another way to, um, to approach it as either having them make a lead gift to inspire others or to be that sort of that, that final part of the, um, the puzzle to ensure that you hit your target. Uh, they looked at corporates, so um, they spoke to existing corporate supporters. They were approached by the co-CEOs for the charity, and those were very personal um, uh, uh, approaches to those corporates and explaining in quite a lot of detail the opportunity to make their donations go twice as far and as a result two of their corporate supporters um, uh, went on to donate. Um, Regular Givers was an interesting one. Um, they were um, worried um, that this audience might not be receptive to it. And given that these are people that are giving already, um, they wanted to be really careful in their, their communication. So they structured a program of tailored email communications, acknowledging their previous support, but letting them know this was another way that they could help. And actually eight of their regular givers gave additional donations through the campaign. Um, LAPS donors, um, again, acknowledging past support, asking them to get involved again, and 11 of their LAPS donors gave gifts during the week. 
trustees were um, uh, were an important group, and they suggested that um, uh, to trustees that um, the Christmas challenge was a great opportunity to financially support the charity. And four of the trustees and two of ex-trustees gave donations as a result. And of course, there were the social media supporters, so putting asks um, out via their followers, um, as well as shareable content. It meant that every audience group had a very targeted, well-planned approach, and, and East African Playgrounds knew who they were speaking to and what they were speaking to at all points throughout the campaign. And you can use that link provided there on your screen um, uh, to read more about their experience. I've got another example here from Chicken Shed. Um, again, another charity that made a real, um, uh, really maximised their impact for the campaign. And I've just taken a screenshot here from their sort of planning process. You can see they've adapted that network mapping. They've got their board of trustees, the development board, celebrity ambassadors, staff, audiences for shows, um, participants in their programmes and activities, schools and community groups. Um, and existing donors like regular givers, major donors, corporates, alumni, and local business supporters. Um, and what I really liked about them, they, they looked at those multiple audience groups and then spent a little bit of time thinking about what is our key messaging for each group. And they came up with two um, fundamental messages, although the sort of the, the language was different and the actual proposition may be varied depending if it was a social media post or a letter or a telephone call. Um, they decided for each group they were either going to ask them to share or ask them to give. And that informed how they best communicated with the groups. Um, uh, they decided who would make con uh, contact with those people and captured all of their plans on a spreadsheet. So they knew, for example, that for um, their friends group, they wanted to, uh, the key message was actually, this is an amazing opportunity to raise funds, please share this message. Whereas um, uh, for local businesses, it was very much, this is an amazing opportunity to raise funds and have them doubled, please give to, um, uh, to Chicken Shed. So those two fundamental mes uh, messages varied for um, uh, depending on which particular group they were. So I'm going to take a pause at this point, sort of about um, 20 minutes in, just to check for questions so far. Um, uh, I have a few technical questions about whether people can actually see the screen. Um, you can see it, Rachel? Yep, um, we can see it at our end. I hope everybody else can as well. It might be something to do with your connection. Um, great, I've got a couple of people who have confirmed they can see it too, so that's good. <laughs> um, so if you are in listen-only mode, you may need to just um, play around with your settings on GoToWebinar and just make sure that you, um, uh, you're you also in the view mode. So this is an opportunity to ask any questions about the um, people and connections and mapping networks. I um, just had a question um, about the um, uh, about the yesterday's webinar. Um, if you check back onto the Give uh, Big Give um, mark, main marketing webinars page, um, uh, you will see um, the links will be added. It takes um, it does take a little while for us to be able to download them from um, uh, from. Um, uh, go to webinar. So just give um, uh, just give us a, um, a a bit of time for that to come through. Um, we've had a question around sort of social media, and if you don't have a social media presence at the moment, um, 
yes, if you don't have one, it's, a, it's challenging because you've got a short space of time in which to build something up. So yes, now would be a good time to start. Um, but you might also want to be thinking about um, and there is another webinar coming up on promotional channels, but my advice would be to, as a small charity in particular, and you say that, you, that your charity is very small, um, think about the ways that people are already engaging with you, because it's those who are warm already to you and know you that will um, uh, respond to your social media, uh, sorry, respond to your campaign messages. And that may not necessarily be via social media. It might be through people coming along to an event that you're holding. It might be through um, uh, email and direct mail. It could be about press um, uh, and uh, um, uh, having an article in the local newspaper, for example. Um, I've had a question about whether a person can donate more than 5,000. Um, yes, so a single donation needs to be, um, will be 5,000 pounds max, but they can make more than one donation um, in response to that question. And I've also had a question which I might divert to Rachel, which is can the spouse of a pledger donate via the online campaign? Okay, so, so so long as um, it's coming from a different person, then that is fine uh, in answer to your question, uh, Kelly. Um, had another question on the targeted approach for social media. I wasn't sure if this was in relation to um, uh, to uh, the case study on um, East Africa playgrounds. Um, I think it probably was because I talked about the approaches. Um, I'll have to um, double check that one and come back to you um, in terms of uh, in terms of their, their approaches there. Um, but I believe one of the first things that they looked at was actually who were their followers on social media um, uh, and thought about who was actually engaging with them on that way and made sure that they had both messages about things that were shareable content as well as things that were encouraging people to donate. Um, and Rachel's just posted the link to say for anybody looking for the videos, they'll be posted in due course. Okay, so I don't think I've seen any more questions come up. Let me just double check. Remember that you need to pop them into the questions because that's where I'm seeing them. Um, there is a question from Elizabeth. Elizabeth, I'm just going to, at the very top there, I'm just going to double check that with, um, with Rachel and I'll respond in just a moment. Um, so in response to Elizabeth's question, which was why there's, we're only allowed one price point on the Big Give project page, um, it's something they're aware of. It's due to the limitations of the site at the moment, but it is something that they will be improving for, um, uh, for next year's webinar. Okay, so moving on then to, um, uh, to proposition. Um, we talked about this, if you joined one of our earlier email, we talked about the, uh, sorry, webinars, we talked about the importance of um, personal stories. Um, and it is research has shown time and time again that showing the impact on what you do for an individual is the thing that is most likely to inspire someone to donate. Um, also remember that that, um, uh, that call to action around the doubling of donations is very important as well. Again, there is a wealth of research um, that shows that doubling of donations leads to more people donating and higher value of donations as well, so and a higher average um, donation value 
Um, you'll want to make sure you've got a clear call to action. So be really clear on what you want your audience to do and make sure you tell them what that is. Um, if not um, uh, once, you know, even twice or, or three times. And when we look at a couple of the examples in a moment, you'll see that sort of repetition and, and reminding people, sort of particularly in emails, um, making sure that um, that call to action is repeated. It's really well worth investing some time um, in this planning phase to develop that bank of content and images and stories that you can use and graphics that you can post on social media because in the week of the campaign itself you don't want to be scrabbling around for that sort of stuff so invest the time now in actually getting those things ready and remember to keep it visual. Um, there's again, images will help um, engagement. Video is fantastic as well. And we're not talking about, you know, slick, glossy, well designed videos um, that have been professionally recorded. You know, actually just hearing from your beneficiaries in their words the difference, and it could be recorded on a smartphone, that can be incredibly powerful too. So think about um, how you're going to hook their attention, how you're going to get their attention in the first place. So you could use um, killer facts. So for example, Oxfam annually develops a set of killer facts which translate potentially overwhelming information into something that's more tangible and attention grabbing. So for example, in 2015, their killer fact was that the richest 1% of the world's population owns 48% of its wealth. And by 2016, they're likely to have the whole half. Now, each year they update those, um, and I'm sure that that's actually moved on. Um, I'm sure they actually have more than the, the half now, but that's probably the subject of another webinar. Um, another comparison in another year, they've said the top 100 billionaires added 240 billion to their wealth this year, enough to end world poverty four times over. So they've taken some really key killer statistics and translated those into something that um, that doesn't feel as, as overwhelming. Um, other examples could be um, using images. So we've talked about the value and, and the fact that engagement will be higher with images and um, videos. Using storytelling, so using the story of an individual to bring to life the challenges that you're addressing and the positive outcomes that you achieve. Case studies can be a really great way to um, inspire support. My advice would be keep it brief. Um, focus on communicating the important information that will compel your donor to give and include an image if you can. Um, quotes can be a great way, again, of getting, um, uh, uh, of getting uh, your beneficiary's voice heard. Um, so they might be um, uh, someone saying about what they've taken from and what difference you've made to them. It could be from one of your key influencers or a high profile supporter um, or even one of your um, volunteers talking about the impact of your work. You might ask a um, rhetorical question um, uh, or indeed use a video to capture attention. Again, think about um, uh, the um, attention span and where your audience might be accessing that video remembering how much of our content we access now through smartphones, where we might be using data allowances to watch videos. Um, so I would keep it short um, and use it as something that hooks their attention and gets them to your ultimate aim, is not to tell them the story, but to engage them enough to go on to actually make that donation to you. So I've got this example here from um, uh, from Action for ME who participated in the challenge in 2017. They've got that really bold statement at the top that is attention grabbing, ME steals lives, help us take them back. And then it goes into the body. So we've got an amazing opportunity for uh, donations towards our services to be doubled at no extra cost to you. So they're hitting in with that um, doubling of donations. Um, uh, immediately. Um, they've got the timeline, they've got the first link in there, so donations made through the big gifts, so there's sort of a soft call there, um, and giving an example of a gift of 10 will become 20, or 300 will become 600. And then there's the linking the donor into um, what the gift is going to deliver for their beneficiaries. So your gift will help us make sure we are there for as many children as adults as possible, whether they're newly diagnosed or have been battling with ME for many years. Again, there's that strong call to action, have your donation doubled now and help us spread the word so that together we can stop ME stealing lives. 
And what's quite useful in here as well and, and interesting to illustrate, um, in your marketing guidebook, we talk about those four pillars and making sure that you include at least three of the enemy, the hero, the beneficiary or recipient, um, and the vision. And you can see this coming through really clearly. You know, the we can stop ME stealing lives is clearly the, the vision. The hero is... Um, uh, in a sense, is actually the donor. It's the donor's gift that's making sure that um, uh, that action for me are there for children and adults, as many children and adults as possible. Um, uh, and we can also see the um, uh, the the fact that Emmy steals lives. That's the um, uh, the enemy in the story. So you can see how those different elements have been weaved through into this particular piece of communications, which was a um, an email that went to their supporter database. Uh, you can also see how this has then um, filtered through into their social media. So I've got screen grabs from their Facebook and Twitter. Um, you know, again, using videos, what does a life with ME feel like? Um, help us support more people like Sharon. So again, that clear call to action. Um, we've got um, on the, uh, the left here, the question, what did ME steal from you? And a quote from um, from someone who... Um, again, has, has accessed their services. Um, I kind of lost everything overnight. I've lost a lot of my friends through it. So she talks about what Emmy has stolen from her in that video. And again, it's keeping that core proposition weaving through um, all of their content that they've developed. I've got another example here from Montage Theatre Arts, and I thought they were a good illustration of using um, these killer facts and statistics. Um, so here you can see an image that they've created um, uh, for their social media, um, uh, and this was um, some key stats that you know children, some children in London will receive less at Christmas than the average family pet. Um, so again, some hard-hitting facts, but gives the gift of fun, imagination, and lifelong skills by funding our bursary program. So again, it's not just the, the need or the enemy, but also hitting in with the, what the vision is and what the donation can achieve. And again, there's another um, screen grab from their, um, uh, from their Facebook page, um, which uses a quote, uses strong images and really positive images to inspire people to donate. So, of course, having hooked your audience, um, you need to keep them interested. Um, my advice is to um, uh, keep it concise. Really check through your copy to make sure that everything that's in there is necessary and performing a function for you. Um, I am um, uh, probably one of the worst at it. I think uh, I could probably go through some of the things I write with a red line and lose a good uh, third of it without losing any meaning at all. Um, so it's not enough to grab their attention. You've got to keep them engaged. And things that will help you will be um, using short, familiar words, so sticking with plain English um, as much as possible. Avoiding things like utilize instead of use, uh, for example, uh, is a classic one. Um, and remembering that your audience may not be familiar with the jargon related to your work. So really avoiding jargon as much as you can. Keep your reader in the story. So using words like you and we and us makes it feel more immediate rather than writing in the third, um, uh, in the third person. That connects people and makes it feel more immediate and more active as well. Your stories of individuals will help you to convey that passion. You know, h hearing about it in your beneficiary's own words um, uh, will give an incredibly powerful call to action. And, um, and making sure that you end with that, that it's clear at the end what you want your donor to do, which is to go on and give the gift of um, whatever you're asking for and whatever it's going to achieve, but connect that donation back to the impact um, uh, will help you to inspire support through your campaign. So again, just to look at a couple of other examples, um, we've got Age Connects, Cardiff in the Vale here. Um, so again, this is an email that went out. And you can see there, if you sort of jump down to under um, double your donation and the big red box, 
they've got this core proposition there. Take a moment to imagine sitting all alone at home with only the television as a source of company. It can be a terrible and frightening experience to see no one for days on end. So you've already immediately engage the audience in that, you know, we are imagining sitting alone at home and, and feeling that way and feeling lonely and isolated. Um, however, what you don't see in there are the words social isolation or loneliness. It's actually talking about what that really feels like for the individual. It then goes on to say we're raising funds for this program. It delivers volunteer-led activities that provide support for older people. We keep people connected through visits for a cuppa, a chat, and outings to the shop or appointments. And again, it just says what it does on the tin, help us to reach more people in this way. Um, so I really like this as an example of sort of, you know, remembering that you're not com communicating in this with a foundation um, or a trust uh, officer, but actually connecting with people who really need to understand and, and visualize what it is that you're doing. What I really liked about this as well, so this is then um, weaving through into um, a longer news story, and they took that core proposition. So if you read the first paragraph, it is exactly the same as what we saw on that envelope, um, uh, sorry, on that email previously. So again, taking a moment to imagine sitting all alone with only the television as a source of company. It leads in, there's a clear image in there. It goes into more, so it's linked around having some time to volunteer, um, which actually was what got the coverage in the paper. Um, but you can't see it in the screen grab I've included here, but there were um, they were also directing people to donate via the Big Give website. Uh, and just a third example of um, Chicken Shed, um, who um, received really high score, uh, a really high score in their um, uh, their 2017 campaign for their creative marketing approaches. And again, they spent some time thinking about a core concept, and they came up with five words. So they looked at all of their feedback that they'd had over the year previous. They got together with staff and they chose five words that represented key areas um, that they felt they had an impact on people's lives. So those words were confidence, and you can see them running down the right of the screen, confidence, empathy, belonging, expression, and self-belief. And all of those turned into that sort of core message about it's a big gift. So confidence, it's a big gift. Empathy, it's a big gift. Culminating in chicken shed, it's a big gift. And you can see the different collateral and Im images all feel part of that same family there on your screen. Um, uniting all of those elements together into a single message. Um, and in doing so, they, they played on that, that simplicity of the big gives um, a simple message to begin with, you know, how significant it is for a child to receive that gift of confidence and what an honor for that donor to be able to provide it. So really, again, connecting the donor with the impact of their donation. And you can see this feed through. Again, these are screen grabs from their um, uh, from their Facebook page. Again, using those images, using the quotes um, that back up whichever of those five core messages they've talked about. And of course, the big thank you message with a video at the end. Um, we've been overwhelmed by your generosity. So that really positive, um, passionate language that's being communicated there um, uh, is fantastic. So hopefully those examples that you've seen have helped um, illustrate some of the concepts we talk about in your marketing guidebook and help you think about how you can position your fundraising messaging. Um, I've got a few questions um, that have come through. Um, let me just check. Um, so I've had a question about whether you can access the other examples we've provided on the Big Give web website after this webinar. Yes, you can. Um, you can, um, if you request a copy of the slides, you will actually be able to just click those links. Um, so I would drop an email to info at the biggive.org.uk um, and just ask them um, for a copy of the slides and the links are all embedded into those so you'll be able to access them. And they've all been put in as short links so if you struggle to click directly, just type them in. Um, I've had a question about um, 
videos um, and what the optimum length of them is. Um, it's something we'll cover in the proposition um, webinar, but just off the top of my head, I suppose I would think about that, um, I guess that attention span that people have. So if we flick back up to some of the videos that we saw in other examples, I'm just going to see if I can um, move that up. So in that final video that was posted down there by Chicken Shed, for example, it looks to have been about 40 seconds long. Um, in other ones that we've seen, yeah, somewhere sort of in that 30 to 40 seconds, you know, because you haven't got a great deal of time to engage people. Um, uh, and really, it's about using that video as a hook for attention, but you want to get them from the result of that to be going to your campaign um, uh, and going to your um, project page to make that donation. Uh, let me just open out questions again. Question about using webinars as part of their engagement campaign. Um, I haven't come across any. Um, so, um, uh, but I will check in with um, uh, with the team to see if they're aware of any. But certainly, I reviewed, and I know the Big Give team did as well. We reviewed a lot of submissions. Um, I would be really interested for anybody who's on this webinar who has potentially used webinars um, as an engagement tool um, to uh, uh, to get in touch with us because I'd be really interested to find out how you have used it. Had a question from when do the projects take place, the dates of the project to be executed? Um, is it over the Christmas holiday? So um, just in response to Debbie's question about when projects take place, um, you will have defined that um, in your um, in your application, so um, it, to join the big give. So my advice would be just to check what what you said there. I don't think it's um, as far as I know, it's not um, essential that it's over the Christmas holiday. Um, do we have any good examples from wildlife campaigns? Funny you should ask that, Olivia, because. Um, uh, in the webinar um, uh, that I've been working on for promotional channels, which is the next one coming up, um, I've got a really good example from Somerset Wildlife Campaign. So, uh, sorry, Somerset Wildlife Trust. So, if you drop, if you're not able to join it, you can access a recording. But also, if you drop an email to info at thebiggive.org.uk, they can send you the link to um, to access their um, uh, their case study. I guess a final piece of advice as well on the um, uh, on the looking at charities is have a look at the social media um, feeds of charities that you um, uh, that you respect and admire and that you would consider donating to and, and people that you see as as similar to you to see what sort of messaging they're putting out there. It doesn't necessarily have to be around the big give. Um, if there are good examples for music and dementia charities, um, again, I will have a bit of a think about whether there are any I can um, come across. And maybe if you drop an email, Mary, to um, to the info email address. Um, but remembering it's not necessarily about copying what someone else has done, but just using it for ideas and inspiration. So hopefully you can take some of the case studies that we've looked at today that are across a range of projects and causes and people to think about how you can use those four pillars um, and really captivate and engage your audience and inspire them to donate. So just to finish up then, I think that seems to be all the questions we've gone through. Just some final, and I will check back at the end just in case there's any more, some final tips to finish up on from the big give. Um, think 
big in the first place. So try and reach as many different groups of people as possible to ensure you hit your target. Think about if there are new avenues for you to try out, maybe something you haven't done before that you could test um, in a relatively low um, resource or low investment way. Um, be really meticulous in segmenting your work and planning the different groups and what you expect them to contribute. So there are no great surprises in the live week, but also to really think to help you manage your time as effectively as possible. Consider your proposition carefully. So think about what really resonates with donors about your um, your work and stories. Um, uh, We've actually seen some great examples of um, charities that consulted with some of their donors and tested some of their messaging with them um, before they actually launched the campaign. So got them involved in an advisory capacity. Um, remembering that your um, matching starts at midday. So 11.59 donations don't count for the match. Um, so uh, it's Tuesday the 27th of November and that's Giving Tuesday. So make the most of that um, uh, that day and everything that's going on around it. Use the hashtag um, uh, to tap into that. And it's available until midday on the 4th of December. Um, make sure that um, you're accessing um, that you're raising enough, that you're you're planning to raise enough to actually tap into those champion funds if you've been awarded champion funds, um, because the pledge funds are used first. So you want to, if you've been awarded champion funds, you want to make sure that you're actually raising enough to tap into those as well. Um, the contact details, just a reminder, uh, info at thebiggive.org.uk. Um, and you can book for further webinars and that link will also take you to um, uh, to the recordings from the webinars that we've had so far and future ones as and when they're available. Um, I'll leave that up on the screen just in case anyone's wanting to, um, uh, to access those. So I'm happy to stay on the call. That sort of finishes up the webinar for today. Um, I'm happy to stay on the line for another five minutes or so just in case anybody else has any questions. Um, but otherwise, I would just wish you all the best. Get in touch with any questions um, if there's things that you're you're looking at later. Um, but really make the most of this fantastic opportunity. Um, it's so wonderful every year to see the amount that is raised for incredible and diverse causes, um, not just delivering projects in the UK, but all over the world. So I really wish you all the best with your campaign. Thank you.